Hi, this is Gabe from FluentForever.com. At this point, we've gone through all of the sounds of Cantonese. If you're using one of my pronunciation trainers, it's going to take you through all of these sounds, train your ears to hear them more accurately, and teach you the spellings that produce them. Then it'll push all of that data into your long-term memory. And if you're not, that's fine too. I made these videos to give you a passing familiarity with all the sounds of Cantonese, so that when you study them in depth, they're going to feel more familiar. That'll make them easier to learn. In either case, I want to show you some peculiarities of Cantonese's Yudping alphabet that should make the spelling system, which is really straightforward, even more sensible. In other languages, this part of the video series tends to be a good 10 to 15 minutes long. For Cantonese, this is going to be much, much shorter. Yudping is a really well-made logical alphabet. We're going to cover just three topics here. We'll talk about how diphthongs are written, we'll go over a couple of peculiarities with the letters U and I, and we'll cover a couple of consonants that are in the process of changing or disappearing in modern Cantonese. So first, diphthongs. We talked about how diphthongs are pronounced already in the last video. We have the vowels u, i, or u, and they show up at the end of a word. As in o, hei, and to, zai. In this video, I want to take a moment to discuss how these three diphthongs are written. First up, u. This one is super simple. Anytime you see the letter u at the end of a word, pronounce it as u. So here's au, mo, deo, and mao. Next, e. This one is almost as simple as u. If you see the letter I at the end of a word, you're going to pronounce it as E in all cases, but one that we'll talk about in a second. That gives you words like say, fai, zi, hoi, and bui. Pretty easy there too. Last we have u. This one shows up in one single context. After the rounded vowel, u, in words like zou or zou zai. This is the one case where the letter I at the end of a word doesn't sound like E. So if you learn the spelling of this single final, E-O-I as in so, then you're going to have Yudping diphthongs down. Next, we'll continue to talk about the letters U and I, just now in the middle of words. In the last video, we discussed four vowels that are written with U's and I's. There was U as in moon, E as in long, E as in Teen, e, as in sick. The first two vowels are both spelled with the letter U, and the second two vowels are both spelled with the letter I. And so it might be helpful to briefly mention how to figure out which one is which. Fortunately, that ends up being pretty simple. If we're in the beginning or middle of a word, generally you're going to pronounce U as U and I as in E. The only times you're going to do something different is when those letters show up before NG. The ng sound. And before k. Then you'll switch to the other vowel. So ung and uk are pronounced ng and o as in long. And o and ing and ik are pronounced ng and ik as in sing sing and sick. In all other finals beginning with those letters, stick to u. And E. Our last topic deals with phonetic changes that are happening right now in Cantonese. Languages are, in the end, living things. They change all the time. Right now, for instance, in Britain, older speakers tend to pronounce this word as tune with a y in it. And younger speakers are starting to say tune with a ch. In 20 to 40 years, tune is probably going to disappear entirely. There are a few similar things happening in Cantonese right now, especially in Hong Kong. The most important and widespread of these has to do with the letter N, when it shows up in the beginning of a word. This letter is in the process of merging with the letter L. Which is to say that younger speakers are tending to pronounce words like nao and nai as lao and lai. This is really widespread in Hong Kong, and so you're going to hear it all the time. At the moment, if you pronounce an N at the beginning of a word, you will be understood, so don't worry about that. But be aware that the speakers around you, especially if they're younger speakers from Hong Kong, they may not be doing the same. Another similar change has to do with words starting with NG. As in NGA and NGOI. Young speakers are starting to drop that NG sound in the beginning, and are just pronouncing these words as a ah, and oi. Nowadays, these phonetic changes are generally referred to as lan yam or lazy sounds. 
and are being actively discouraged. But generally, discouraging changes like these has roughly the same power as waving a cane in the air and saying, oh, kids these days. These changes are going to happen regardless. And so you might as well know about them ahead of time. And so with that, we're actually done with the whole Cantonese spelling system. To review, we began by talking about the spelling of diphthongs in Yudping. Basically, to make a diphthong ending in U, you add the letter U. Making diphthongs like O. To make a diphthong ending in E, you add the letter I. Making diphthongs like Hey, the only ending you really need to memorize is e o i, which forms the diphthong o, as in to zai. We then discussed what happens when you see the letters u and i in the middle of words. Generally, you'll pronounce these letters as u and e, as in moon and teen. The only times you're going to do something different is when those letters show up before an ng, n, or before a k. In those cases, you'll switch over to u,、uh, as in long, and o,、uh, and e,、uh, as in sing, sing, and sick. Finally, we discuss two of the more important changes happening now in Cantonese pronunciation. The first of those changes has to do with the letter n. At the moment, the younger generation of Hong Kong is tending to pronounce it as a letter l. So words like nao and nai are often pronounced as lao and lai. And、the other change we discussed has to do with words starting with n g. For those words, younger speakers are starting to get rid of that consonant altogether, pronouncing words like nga and ngoi as a and oi. For both of these changes, I'd recommend sticking to the more official pronunciation for your own studies, but I don't want you getting thrown when you encounter these changes out in, you know, the wild world. And so, with that, we have finished Cantonese. If you need a hand in memorizing all of this and training your ears to hear it, then grab a Cantonese trainer from my website linked below. You'll have all of it memorized within a few weeks. I'll see you next time.